Hi everyone, my name is Chris Jose. I'm the founder and CEO of the MFS Trade School in Sanford, Orlando, Florida. If you wanna build a million dollar cleaning business, we're gonna show you how. In this webinar, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how I did it 25 years ago. And I always say, if one man can do it, another one can do it. And guess what? You're gonna do it faster, you're gonna do it cheaper than I ever did. Why? Because you have me as your guide, you have me as your consultant. I will be here to help you, what tools to get, what chemicals to use, and how to fast track this, where you're gonna build literally a million dollar cleaning business, not in five or 10 years, not with 500 or a thousand restaurants, but literally with practically 50 restaurants, you can build a great business. How are you gonna do it? We're gonna show you the various types of cleaning services that you can offer restaurants and you're gonna be a one-stop shop for all the cleaning uh, services that restaurants need. And some of these cleaning services, guess what? They're government mandated. They're enforced by fire inspectors. They're enforced by insurance companies. Schools across the country, every board of education puts out their cleaning jobs or their kitchens, their exhaust suit systems out on yearly contracts. All the schools on one yearly bid. We've seen them as high as 300,000, 400,000, half a million dollar projects. And we're gonna show you how to bid on those. You're never gonna learn this anywhere on the internet. This is a one-time opportunity for you to gain this knowledge and fast track this thing and build a great business for you and your family. So, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, is exhaust hood cleaning. Um, I don't know how much you know about that, but uh, our main service, which we started the school with eight years ago, was the commercial kitchen exhaust hood cleaning for restaurants. So exhaust hood cleaning is something that every restaurant has to do. No exceptions. OK, every restaurant in the United States cleans their exhaust hood system. And some of them do it monthly, some of them do it quarterly, some of them do it twice a year. And that varies really on how much cooking they do, what type of cooking they do, and all that stuff. So there's a frequency schedule that every restaurant abides by when it comes to cleaning their exhausted system. And it's called the NFPA uh, Code 96. The National Fire Protection Association writes the codes that governs how often exhausted systems in restaurants need to be cleaned. But if they're not cleaned, guess what? The fire marshal will shut them down. So, um, and the insurance companies will actually not give them an insurance policy unless they abide by uh, local and national fire codes and the NFPA uh, code 96 fire codes. So um, that one is a slam dunk. You can't go wrong with that one. Um, it will be around forever. Uh, we have some unique uh, ways of marketing and going and, and, and getting the, those clients that I'm going to share with you guys. I've been doing it for 30 years. I'm second generation government bonded contractor. And uh, I know a lot of things. I've learned a lot of marketing, a lot of um, estimating, uh, you know, uh, tricks of the trade, so to speak, that will allow you to really gain market share fast. You know, if you do this on your own, um, you're going to go through a tremendous learning curve. If you do it through our course, you're going to you're going to go in it uh, on on tenth gear, you know. So you'll be able to um, build your business quicker and faster. Plus, you have me for unlimited uh, phone support. Any questions you have on anything, whether it be marketing, estimating, uh, equipment, whatever, pretty chemicals, whatever, pretty much you need, we're a one stop shop, and I'm here to help you grow your business, not just train you, certify you, and that's it. So that's the exhausted cleaning. And um, like I said, that one is your is your base, you know, because every restaurant needs it. Hands down, whatever, whatever they're going to be doing, they're going to need that that course, that service. Um, the second thing that we offer that you can offer to your restaurants is uh, kitchen appliance uh, steam cleaning. So uh, right now, as of two years ago, the NFPA code 96, the same governing body that wrote uh, the codes for the exhaustive cleaning, 
also wrote in the NFPA section 12.7.1 and section 12.7.2 that um, their appliances, the restaurant appliances need to be cleaned once a year. Uh, and it has to be done by a certified entity. So they can't even clean their own appliances. Yes, they can clean them, but you're still going to need to go in there and actually inspect them, make sure they're clean all around and give them a, uh, a certificate of com of uh, compliance that they're in order and they got it inspected or cleaned by a certified entity. Now, a lot of those restaurants, uh, the appliances in the restaurants have grease that really builds up in throughout the years and it's very very hard to clean restaurants can't even clean their own appliances if you've ever gone into a kitchen you'll see how like dark they are and how like the grease is just built up and it's hard as a rock you try to scrub it by hand you can't do it the chemicals that they have in restaurants um cannot clean or remove that grease so the only way that can be removed is actually by a high temperature, dry steam clean machine and a strong chemical like our grease eater Ninja. So that's another thing that restaurants can do without. They need that service once a year or the fire marshal will shut them down. So those are two great services um, that you can offer. Now, um, the exhaustive cleaning, for example, an average price that you can charge is about $650. And you can write these things down, about $650 a cleaning for an average exhaustion system that's maybe about 12 to 14 feet long, okay, with one fan. Now, the minute you start going over that, then the price goes up. There's, you know, hospitals, hotels that have, you know, 10 stories uh, before the fan goes you know, up on the roof and there's hundreds of ver vertical feet of duct that need to be cleaned. Those jobs can be ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, okay? So there's a lot of money in uh, hood cleaning. Um, now, the other thing that uh, I want to share with you guys with hood cleaning is that you can also offer them weekly filter cleaning exchange program. The weekly filter cleaning alone can bring you even more money than even the exhaust hood cleaning but you do it in combination. So you, you do it like this. You want to charge like $75 a week, okay, for up to 10 filters. And you go in there once a week, you order a second set of clean filters for them. And every week you go in there for five minutes, take the dirty ones, bring them back to the shop, soak them in tanks soaking overnight. And then you swap them with the clean ones, $75. Well, that's $75 every week, 75 times 52 weeks, is $3,900 a year just from filter cleaning, okay? Now, when you combine that with the exhaust hood cleaning, which can be $650 to $700, and you do those, on an average one, you do it four times a year, then you're talking two, two times $650 is, is $1,300 multiplied by two, $2,600 a year for the exhaust hood cleaning. Profit margins are very high on this, okay? Material and labor, um, the material is very cheap. It's probably under $15, $20 for a cleaning, your chemical and your plastic and things like that on an average cleaning. The rest, your labor, whatever you pay your guys for three, four hours, it only takes about three hours uh, a night to clean an exhausted system. The rest is your profit. So you have very, very nice high profit margin. A crew of two people should be able to knock out uh, two jobs a night. So um, that, that's a very good uh, profitable business right there. The kitchen appliance cleaning will take you about uh, about an hour for each appliance. So money-wise, uh, how much you can charge for the, your appliance steam cleaning, most restaurants have about three to four appliances in their kitchen, okay? So three to four appliances, let's take an average, let's say, of four appliances, uh, multiplied by, we charge about $450 per appliance, okay? And that's just the exterior, okay? To do the inside of the appliance, that you may want to charge another 150 bucks, depending on how dirty it is, or if you got to take it apart and stuff. But if we do an average of about $450 uh, for, let's say, three appliances, okay? Then you got uh, three times 450 
which comes out to three times 450 bucks, another $1,350 from the kitchen appliance, okay? So the money starts to add up, okay? $3,900 from the exhaustive cleaning a year for just the filters, plus another $2,600, uh, $650, dollars 650 is uh, $6 and six, twelve, $13, $2,600 a year for that. So you guys can add up the money and see how much money can be made. The next service, which is a great, great service uh, and very profitable because there's very little um, competition in it, okay, is, is janitorial restaurant cleaning or total restaurant cleaning, okay? Front of the house, back of the house, 10 o'clock, restaurant closes, guess what? Chef goes home, everybody goes home. Your two guys, one or two guys go in there for three or four hours, depending on how big the place is. And every night, Monday through Sunday, you guys are cleaning the restaurant. Okay. Now, you may think, well, I don't know if I want to get into the nightly cleaning. But the money really, really adds up. So watch this. An average cleaning for a restaurant the front, the back, the bathrooms, the floors, okay? Uh, and by the way, all you need is a vacuum and and a uh, and a floor scrubber and some some small mops and you know little little things like that, small chemicals, and you're building a huge business. So watch watch the math, okay? So you want to charge an average of about 150 to 200 dollars a cleaning, okay is what you want to charge. An average restaurant. Obviously, there's exceptions, right? There's restaurants that are going to be three times that price if they're huge. But your average restaurant, let's say, um, is going to be around 150 to 200 dollars. Okay. Now, let's not worry about the gross. Okay, money. Let's let's pretend that out of that 150 or 200 dollars that you're going to charge them, that you want to make just 50 dollars pure profit after your labor, after your expenses. Okay. You want to make just $50 a night. That's it. Okay. Now watch the math. Okay. So if we made just $50 a night, multiplied by 365 days a year, you're looking at $18,250 per year per account. Per account. Okay. Now that may not that may not seem like a lot of money, but you multiply that by 50 restaurants and multiply it by 50 restaurants, and you're looking at nine hundred and twelve thousand dollars of profit per year from just 50 restaurants. You see, so the numbers really add up, you know, because it's a nightly thing. So that's huge. Uh, public entity schools, the fourth service that we teach. Is public entity school bidding for hood cleaning and power washing? Now, what is that? Every school system in the United States, if you call up the Board of Education in your county, okay, which controls all the schools in the county, depending on how big the county is, and you call them up and you say, I'm interested in finding out how to bid on the exhaust, the cafeteria exhaust cleaning or the power washing for all your school systems, when is that going out to bid? i like to be able to put, be put on the bidders list, okay? They will tell you when that bid is coming up. And what they do, the Board of Education, they're smart. They don't bid one school at a time. They take all the schools in the county, 50, 75, 100, 200 schools, depending on how big the county is, and they put it in what they call an open public bid. Yearly contract, one contract, all the schools. Those projects can be a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar projects. Okay. And if they like you, they can actually continue you. Most of them will say, We like your price. We'll extend that contract for an additional one to two years. Okay. So now, if you got this project, either power washing or exhaustion cleaning of all their cafeterias, and you got a $200,000 contract for the next three years, there's $600,000 right there, okay? 
and schools, school cleaning for uh, for exhaustive cleaning is the is is just crazy because they don't even cook anything. Okay, they cook they 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 cook pizza and chicken fingers, <laughs> so their hoods are spotless. But the but the insurance companies force them because it's kids there. They force them to remove any kind of grease that's on there. Okay. So you're making money cleaning during the day. And this is the other great thing about cleaning schools is that they're typically done after 2.30 p.m. or 3 p.m. when schools close. So your guys can start cleaning hoods during the day at schools, which literally, instead of three to three and a half hours, which is an average restaurant, a school exhaust hood system, well, you'll knock it out in literally an hour to an hour and a half, if that, okay? Because they're spotless. So you're going to go flying. And um, with that, then your guys can take a break around seven ish, and then boom, ten o'clock. Go right next to their, go right into their uh, their nighttime cleaning for the restaurant, whatever you have scheduled. So it is a great, I call it gravy money. <laughs> School uh, contracts are gravy money to me. Um, and although we don't teach power washing yet. If you know how to bid on these school systems, which we actually spend a few hours teaching you the 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 what I call it, um, the art of bidding uh, public entity work, uh, which is uh, what it's done in what they call an open public bid system. Open public bid means, number one, you got to be bonded. And we have a bonding agency that I could actually help you get bonded. OK. Um, our new guys, okay, which is very hard to do if you're not if you're not within our circle and you try to get bonded yourself. It's not like insurance bonding. You don't pay anything out front like insurance bonding company. They'll take a look at you. They'll say who's behind you, who's helping you, blah blah blah, and then they'll start you off with a bonding limit, and you don't pay until you're awarded a contract, and then you're going to pay three percent. They even give you uh, thirty days to pay because they know that. Uh, schools and townships and hospitals, everything that gets government funded gets um, gets to put it out what they call an open public bid. So they pay monthly and open public bid means that the lowest responsive bidder gets the gets the job. So let's say it's a three hundred thousand dollar job and you bid on it two hundred ninety nine thousand and somebody bids it a dollar more than you. Guess what? You get the work. You were a dollar cheaper. You could be 10 cents cheaper. And if your bid is responsive, they legally have to give it to the lowest responsive bidder. So I love I love uh, public entity bidding. Uh, I grew up in that. My dad was a government contractor. I was second generation. That's how I learned it. There's no books on it. There's no videos on it. There's nothing on how to bid public entity work. I'm literally the authority on that. I've helped hundreds of people and contractors get into this type of uh, work, but that's another world of money, okay? The public entity sector, townships, municipalities, once you're bonded, okay, and you understand the open public bidding method, you can actually bid on, if you know any construction trades, like painting, concrete work, sidewalks, curbs, drainage, landscape, if you know any of those things, you can actually now start bidding on public entity work that goes out to bid across the country. Gazillions of trillions of dollars go out to bid um, every day throughout all the municipalities, townships, cities, board of education, hospitals, schools. They all put things out oh, to bid. It's, it's an amazing, amazing uh, area of money that 95% of contractors don't even know exist. So um, you'll learn that in the public entity uh, school bidding. Um, the next course that we teach is virus disinfection, okay? Virus disinfection bloomed, you know, during COVID and has fizzled down, but now we're seeing a little bit of a surge again, okay? I can tell you that although the residential sector and a lot of the commercial sectors are not pretty much doing anything with virus disinfection, they kind of have forgotten about it, depending on what state you're in. Obviously, that that could be different, but um, don't don't knock it off the list. And the reason is that public entity sector, the bus stations, 
the hospitals, the school systems, okay, they will continue to put out public entity bids for virus disinfection, and no one will see them except the people in the public entity sector, okay? We have MFS students that have taken the virus disinfection course from two years ago, and I personally have helped them bid on $400,000 bus stations, okay? I've been on, I've helped them bid on uh, reservations that go out to bid for virus disinfection, half a million dollar bids, and they've gotten them, okay? And they're continuing to bid on them to this day, every year, they go out to bid. So um, you may not make any money from the residential sector with virus disinfection, but heck, you're gonna make a heck of a lot of money if you want to apply virus disinfection and get your training, your certification, we sell all the chemicals, we sell all the equipment, we'll teach you the knowledge of how to kill that friggin' COVID and how to do it with safe chemicals. And um, you can get into that for public entity uh, jobs that go out to bid that can give you, I don't even, you don't even can imagine how much money you can, you can make off that, you know? So, um, I'm not going to put a dollar amount on that because it's a bid. You can win it. You cannot win it. But literally, you can be making a lot of money bidding on public entity work for virus disinfection. Um, the next thing that um, you want to look at is a new service that we just added to MFS. I'm excited about it because um, it's based around a machine that I actually invented. Um, and this machine is a is a fryer oil filtration machine okay it's a cooking oil filtration machine that filters cooking oil to the to a microscopic level and right now i don't know if you guys know but cooking oil has literally tripled in price for restaurants restaurants used to pay 18 dollars 17 and 18 dollars for a five gallon box of cooking oil now they're paying 45 50 dollars for the same five gallon box of oil. So um, the fryer oil, we have people that are using my oil filter machine right now. We have it inside one of the biggest venues in the country. We have it inside the uh, BB&T Legend Stadium in Philadelphia. We have it in the, um, we have two machines inside the uh, Cabana Resort in Universal. We have it in the Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips their flagship store in Ohio. We have it in restaurants across the country and they're literally cutting their cooking oil costs in half, okay? We're saving them thousands of dollars, okay? Now, what do you make out of that? So because it's a machine that I invented and I sell, okay, we sell it at $6,000 to the restaurants, okay? It's not a cheap machine, but again, you gotta remember, most of the machines, 90% of the machines that are out there today are non-microscopic oil filter machines. The only thing they'll remove is the breadcrumbs, okay? We go above and beyond that. We remove the flour. We remove the, 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 the you know, all the fine um, stuff, the bone marrow, the, everything that breaks and disintegrates uh, into like a soup or a flour, we take those out with our secondary microscopic filter, okay? And when you do that, it makes the oil clean again. Now, you guys can go look at that video. I may I may try to play it if we have enough time here. Uh, you can go see it at www.microfilterking.com, microfilterking.com. And you'll see a video on that. It's an amazing, amazing machine. So what do you make out of that? Well, you'll make 10% commission out of that when you sell a machine to the restaurant you don't even have to buy it just show them the video we'll give you an agent code and as soon as you sell it we'll give you your commission now past that what do you guys make we'll share with you some of the monthly filters that they buy from us because when they buy that machine they got to buy the filters they're 200 a month for 30 filters they're throwaway filters every night one uh, filter for up to three fryers. Okay. So out of that $200, we share $50 a month with you every month residual for the life of that machine. Okay. Now that machine will go six years. Okay. Six to seven years. We got machines out there right now, six to seven years. They haven't even changed motor or pump yet. 
Okay, they're still making us money. Okay, so every month you're going to get your cut. Now, when that machine we have a when it reaches year six or seven, and the motor and pump dies, as long as they've been continuing to buy filters from us every month with no interruption and then go somewhere else buying something stupid because they want to try to save money or whatever and they're using our filters guess what we're giving them a continued warranty on their machine the motor the pump which is the heart of the machine and the electrical system is all warranted. so year six year seven they call us up and they say hey my machine just died i need a new motor and pump boom we just send it to them for free Okay, why? Because we want to continue making that monthly money from the filters, and so will you. So hopefully for the next 10, 15 years, as long as they keep that machine, you and I are both making money off those filters. That's residual income. That's really good money, okay? Now, past that, what do we make? So the, the course is fire oil filtration and waste oil collection. Now, what is waste oil collection? Some of you may have heard this. But this is something that not too many people know about. It's almost like exhausted cleaning. It's actually even more hush-hush than exhausted cleaning. And that is when they're done with that fryer oil. Like we took them, instead of two, three days, we took them to seven to 10 days, right? We extended the life of the cooking oil. Great. Okay. They save money. Now what happens? They can't throw it down the drain. Okay. They can't throw it, the vegetable waste oil down the drain. It's illegal. So what do they do? They throw it in the in the in the dumpster area. There's a, a dumpster that actually says vegetable waste oil only. OK, they throw it in there because what happens every month? A waste oil collection company comes there with a pump truck. They pump it out. So they pump out anywhere between um, 100 to 150 gallons, depending on how much oil the the vegetable waste oil the the restaurant throws out depending on how many fryers they got right but an average you got about 100 gallons in there okay so every month somebody goes there collects that vegetable waste oil and guess what to do with it they take it to the nearest biodiesel plant and they sell it to the biodiesel companies which now turn it into diesel for farm equipment and trucks and things like that Okay, so it's being reused. From that, we're going to teach you how to collect it, either manage it right now. Initially, I would say don't buy a trailer with a thousand gallon a truck, a, a, a container with a pump. Don't do that yet. And a driver, don't do that yet. Uh, manage it. Okay, so tell the restaurant, hey, Mr. Restaurant, here's our services. We do exhaustion cleaning. We do appliance cleaning. We do restaurant cleaning. We're going to do all these things for you. Fryer oil filtration. We're going to save you money on fryer oil. Okay. And we're going to collect your waste oil. And we're going to give you money back for every gallon that we collect for your waste oil. You can give them a, a 25 cents a gallon. Okay. You, hopefully you'll make about uh, 50 to 75 cents a gallon to a dollar a gallon when you manage it and get a small waste oil collection company to collect it for you, okay? Now, the reason why you want to do that is because you want to reach about, about 100 accounts, in my opinion. You want to have about 100 restaurants where you're collecting their waste oil because the restaurant owner, does, most restaurant owners don't even make any money from it. They don't even pay them anything, okay? So it, it, it's very easy for you to say to the restaurant, I'll give you a great price on your hood cleaning, I give you a great price on this, great price on that, but I want your waste oil as well. Okay, they'll be like, take it, you know, as long as you get it out of here every month, you know, and I don't have to pay anything. So with the waste oil, you're going to manage it at first until you reach 100 accounts. Okay, once you reach 100 accounts, you're going to get an, an F-150, F-250, okay, with the, with the, with the two-inch ball. You're going to get a driver in that truck. And you're going to get a trailer, a double axle trailer. It costs you about 14000 You get a double axle trailer with a pump, hoses, reel, and a 1,000 or 500-gallon uh, tank, okay? Now, your driver is going to go to your restaurants, and you're going to be vacuuming that waste oil yourself. 
And when you reach a thousand gallons, go to the nearest biodiesel plant, they're all across the country, and sell it for two, three dollars a gallon. Okay. So you do the math, 100 accounts, how much money is made on vegetable waste oil, you'll be just shocked at how much money is there, okay? In fact, many of those containers have locks on them because people go in the night and they steal the waste oil. That's how much money there, there is in waste oil, okay? So there you have it, guys. This is your array of services, okay? When you go into a restaurant, you don't just sell them one service. Restaurant owners have lots of vendors. They have food vendors. They got so many problems in their heads running their restaurant that they want one guy for many services, okay? If you can go to that restaurant owner, say, Mr. Restaurant Owner, we are a one-stop shop, okay? For many of your cleaning services, and fryer oil, we have all these services. Let me show you what we got. And we'll give you unbeatable prices on these services. It doesn't make sense for you to do it on your own. The money that we can save you and make you will be way, way more than what you're paying right now, getting it done without us, okay? So when you offer all these bundled services, I call them bundled services to, to the restaurant owners, okay? They're going to love you because they got one phone number, one person, and that's it. They're happy. You know, as long as you have that restaurant owner, you treat them like gold. Okay. Which is the next thing I'm going to teach you. Once you take our courses, we teach you how to, how to make these guys happy, how to do the work where they're satisfied, you know, how to go above and beyond, you know. Um, we're going to teach you marketing. We're going to teach you estimating because there's nothing wrong in getting a job and then you priced it wrong. You priced it too damn low, okay? You price it low, guess what happens? It's a spiral, okay? You can't find workers because you can't pay well enough because you didn't charge well enough, okay? So if you can't find workers, your business ain't going to grow. You as an owner of the business, Okay, what my vision is, okay, for you is not to be the worker. Okay, if you're the worker, if you're the cleaner because you want to save money and you don't want to hire people or you can't hire people because you didn't price it right and you're the worker, you will never grow. You'll be making a salary. Might as well work for someone else and not have the headaches of running your own business. Okay, when you're an owner, after the first month or two, I'm not telling you not to do the work because you got to learn it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to teach you the training, the online, the courses, the hands-on, whatever. And we'll be there for you all year long, unlimited phone support. But you're still going to have to learn that work. You're going to have to be great at it, okay? So you can teach your guys how to be great at it. So the first two, three months, yeah, you're going to get your hands dirty, okay? Great. That's good. But after two, three months as an owner, you need to consciously Pull yourself away from the cleanings, the hands-on, okay? Now your job is to be nicely dressed, your logo, okay, your company, and going into restaurant owners, into establishments, and building relationships with that restaurant owner, okay? And, and literally, all you got to do is go have breakfast, lunch, and dinner and invite that restaurant owner to come and talk to you. Because when you're in their store, it's not a solicitation. You're on the you're you're there in their premise. Okay. You're there supporting them and giving them giving them money. So guess what? Out of respect, they're gonna come say hi to you. Okay. And when they see you with your logo, you talk to them. I'll show you how to talk to them. And they see what you're doing, and you give them a flyer with all your services, they're gonna eat that up. They're gonna eat that up. And that's what your job is as an owner of a business is to build that business up by building relationships with other owners, okay? Owners want to talk to other owners. They don't want to talk to salespeople, okay? They don't respect that. I'm the founder and, and CEO of ABC Cleaning Company, sir. Yeah, I'm eating in your restaurant. I want to talk to him, you know? He's going to talk to you. And that's how you're going to pick up business. You're going to be meeting with restaurant associations that actually have uh, monthly meetings with restaurants and go giving them presentations, 
and I'll show you how to do that. But that's how that's what you got to do to grow a million dollar a year business. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about financing because all this stuff, you know, uh, can't be done without money, obviously, right? So you could use your own money, your tools, your equipment for exhaustive cleaning is going to cost you around ten and a half thousand. Uh, your biggest piece of equipment is going to be your hot water pressure washer. Okay, kitchen appliance cleaning. Your your biggest piece of equipment is going to be your steam cleaner. It's about five thousand. Five fifty five hundred. I think we have got some promo codes when you first register for the course, so the, the machine's a little cheaper. Uh, other than that machine, what you need is some rags, a wet vac. I mean, minuscule the amount of money that you need for that. Um, so if you wanted to do all the courses, if we were to add things up, you're looking at about uh, you know ten and a half thousand for the exhaustive cleaning, the kitchen appliance around uh, 6,000, let's say, with all the little small things, chemicals, et cetera. Um, the restaurant cleaning, all you need is about $2,500. Your floor scrubber and your backpack vacuum is pretty much all you need. You can literally do that with $2,500. Um, your public entity bidding, you don't really need anything except the knowledge, which I'm gonna share with you, okay? Virus disinfection, you really don't need a lot of, uh, I'm not going to tell you, buy uh, $5,000 worth of chemical and have it sitting there, baloney. Don't do that until you get a big job, okay? So I would say maybe just for starters, you'll have maybe anywhere from $500 to $1,000 on just some uh, major, uh, you know, your your backpack blower, which is like $250, $300 a few, you know, basic chemical things, just so you're ready to go in case you get uh, somebody that um, that says, hey, come and do it for me. You know what I mean? You need to have that. Uh, so um, 500 to 1,000 in some small tools for the virus disinfection. Fryer oil filtration. Do not buy a $6,000 machine and have it sitting there. When a restaurant wants it, just let us know. We'll ship it to them. We got financing for them as well if they want to use it. That way, there's no money coming out of your pocket for the oil filtration business, okay? Or the waste oil collection. <laughs> Zero dollars for there for you to grow a, a, a really huge business in that, okay? Um, so literally, literally, all you need to bundle everything up is 10 and a half, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, about $20,000 will actually buy you all your tools and your all your equipment that you need for all these services, okay? Do you need to buy it all at once? No. Can you say to me, hey, I'm going to go into this with a cold water pressure washer for $1,000. Let me see if I can pick up business. Let me grow this thing and, and do it like that. You can, okay? You, you can save money and just be ready to buy it as soon as you get, you know, the, the business lined up. But um, uh, we have a company called Trio Capital Financing, okay? As long as you have a business, even if it's one day old, because they can do residential uh, financing for residential or homeowner or whatever. So you have to be a business, even if it's a day old, as long as you have decent credit. Decent credit is... 650 or above with you know some history on your credit cards you know if you just open the credit card and you have zero history and you have 650 or 690 credit score but you have zero history they're not going to like that but and if you don't have it then put it under your spouse's name you know make her 51 percent owner of the business or whatever which is by the way minority owned business at that point women owned or african-american there's a tremendous amount of money in that sector alone, set aside just for minority contractors. So that's that's another topic for another time. But um, if you do that, whoever has good credit, okay, better credit score, then you want to go with Trio Capital Financing. And Trio Capital Financing will give you, with no money down, okay, use their money to grow your business, okay? They'll give you a one-year, two-year, three-year, or four-year monthly plan, whichever one you like. Is it going to be high interest a little bit? Yeah, it will be high interest, 
but you can pay it off early if you wanted to, okay? So that way you got a nice slow monthly payment and now you're growing your business. You can wrap your courses as well, okay? You can wrap your courses um, with the with the equipment. They don't mind that, okay? So, and we can give you, if you buy all the courses, or if you buy at least three courses, I will sharpen our pencil and we'll give you a great price. Hopefully you buy the rest of the, the courses as you start to grow your business, but we'll give you a greatly reduced price if you buy three or more courses instead of one at a time or whatever. So that way you can wrap them up with, um, with the, with the, uh, with uh, trio capital. And that way you can really grow fast. The things that I would pick is the exhaustive cleaning. I would pick the restaurant cleaning and I will pick the appliance cleaning and obviously the uh, bidding and how to bid. I'll throw that in there at no cost. So you can know how to bid the cafeteria school uh, projects. The virus disinfection, way to do that. Um, the file oil filtration, do it because it's not going to cost you anything. Um, the course is not expensive. It's, it's pretty cheap. Um, with, if you buy three or more, I may throw that in there as well. So that way you're not paying anything for the knowledge and the course to be able to move the um, oil filtration machine in your area. But guys, that's the way to grow a phenomenal business. If you've never owned the business, you've always worked for somebody, I can tell you as somebody that I've always owned my own businesses ever since I was in my 20s after I graduated college. Thank God to my father who, you know, was a contractor and he helped me. Um, you know, I've never had to work for anybody. Um, and it, it's a great thing to, to work for yourself. The hardest thing about being an entrepreneur and starting your own business and growing your own business is, is knowing how to do that so you can avoid the learning curves, okay? It's those learning curves that put you out of business, you know? i give you an example, okay? Somebody goes to start an exhaustive cleaning business. They don't know how to price things. They hear whatever they hear on the internet, Googling or whatever, and they're charging, you know, $350 a cleaning when they should be charging $650 a clean because in their minds, well, I'm going to clean it myself and my kid's going to help me. And man, 350 bucks, uh, labor, I have no labor, material is going to cost me $25. I'm, I'm making 300 bucks for the night. Well, you know what? You can't think like that because you're not going to, you're not, you're not going to grow. You got to have two workers working while you're the boss getting accounts and building one, two, second crew, third crew, fourth crew, fifth crew. Well, you're going to be bringing in a million dollars worth of business from just exhaust hood cleaning. Never mind the other services and the additional money you can bring in from them. So the biggest mistake that you can make as an entrepreneur is not knowing how to price things, not knowing how to hire employees. I I can't tell you the times that I've started businesses where in the in the in my height and in my peak of being a million dollar business, okay. I've had workers, okay, which I entrusted that freaking stole my customers and stole my business right under my nose because I wasn't smart enough to or or understand that I need to give them a strict non-confidentiality and, and non-circumvent agreement, okay? So it's little things like that that can cripple your business overnight, okay? Or, or for example, not knowing what types of forms to use. So when you're going to clean a restaurant and you see something that's non-compliant or you see fire hazards, okay, and you are not understanding how you need to protect yourself from that liability and then a fire happens, okay, and you didn't mark anywhere on your job service report, Mr. Restaurant Owner, I see three fire hazards here. You need access panels. You need um, the correct baffle filters with spark arresters because you're using wood and a fire is eminent, okay? And now it's your responsibility to fix these things if there's a fire. We wash our hands. We're not responsible. You need to fix these, okay? If you don't write that simple sentence in there, in that JSR, okay, and there's a fire in that restaurant, that insurance company and their lawyers are going to go after the weak link 
Okay, well, Mr. Re Mr. Exhaust Cleaner, NFPA says that you have to clean the entire exhaust system and you didn't do the vertical duct. Well, we didn't put in there anywhere that, hey, restaurant owner doesn't want to pay an extra $500 to do the vertical duct, which hasn't been cleaned in five years. That's your fault. You got to write it in there. So you have to know how to protect yourself in business. That's the way you're going to build a great business. You can't cut corners. You can't hire people, the wrong people, and then have them there because you're, oh, I invested three months in training this guy. I can't fire him now. Who am I going to find? Oh, I got to place hands again. You know what? Wrong attitude. Change that attitude. Your business is as good as your employees. Remember that. You got a bad apple. You see that person on week one that they're not for you. Kick them out. Kick them out. I don't care if you got to shut your business down until you find the right person. But you, when you find that right person, you treat them like gold. Okay. And that's the way you're going to build a great business. Okay. So it's a bunch of things that happen together. But let me tell you that when you build a great business and you're a business owner, you never have to worry about somebody firing you. You never have to worry about, I need to take a vacation. I don't feel like working today. You know, when am I going to get, I'll get into work at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock if I want to. You know what I'm saying? You have the freedom. When you have that freedom, okay, your whole life changes, okay? I've been fortunate. I've been really, really fortunate to, number one, be an entrepreneur, but number two, get the help from my dad as a business owner that he was and the, and the, fin the financing to be able to help me become a contractor, which is what I started to do before I got into exhaust cleaning. So uh, I'm here to share with you guys my knowledge. I'm here to share with you my passion. I'm here to share with you my vision on how you guys can build a great business, okay? You don't have to be, you don't have to be a millionaire to start a business. You really don't. And it, it, it's, a, it's a shame because a lot of people, you know, they don't know this and they save, you know, 100,000 or they're, you know, they use their, they're save money and everything, and um, they go pay $100,000, $200,000 for a franchise, and they buy an exclusive territory with one service, and then that franchisor, you know, gets royalties from them for life, and you're, you're put in the box, and you can't even grow outside that box, you know? So here I am telling you that I can teach you these trades that you can do for yourself and really grow a million dollar cleaning business with very little money. And, and if you have good credit, don't even use your own money. Use Trio Capital's money. And in year one, you've made enough, pay off that 25,000 or whatever it is, or 20 or 15 or whatever's left. And see, ya, you're starting on your own now. You don't need you know, to keep paying them for the next three, four years. But that's the way to build a great business, guys. That's the way to do it. And, if, and, and I say this, if one man can do it, another man can do it, okay? So you guys can do it with my help. I'm here to help you. I'm passionate about that. I give unlimited phone support all year long. I literally pick up my phone 24-7. If you look at some of the Google reviews on MFS and our, our video reviews uh, from students that we've had from the past eight years, you're going to see that I really pride myself on helping students picking up my phone and just being there for you guys to really help you build something great, okay? Hi, my name is Andrew Arminas. I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I came to learn how to clean hoods and do some uh, microfiltration of oil. I am a retired firefighter of 20 years and I'm excited about this program. Chris and Joe were phenomenal we had a great hands-on we had a great time uh they made um learning fun they made learning uh, exciting uh four days i felt like i took a college course that's how much information we got and i am ready to work i'm ready to work hi everybody my name is elvis clark i'm the owner of a mechanical company in nassau bahamas that is we do um fire sprinkler and we do some plumbing work 
Um, being in the fire industry, um, I've had occasions where inquiries came in to me as to hood cleaning because we also do maintenance on fire equipment that is hood system, portable fire extinguishers. And for about two years, I've been looking into the hood cleaning system. I searched the internet and wasn't able to find anything uh, about two weeks ago. I did another search on the internet because I have, actually have a job offer in the Bahamas to do hood cleaning. And I wanted, it, I wanted to do the work myself. So my search revealed um, this company here in Sanford, Florida, MFS, that's correct. And I fill out, I went to the website, fill out the form, and like an hour later, someone from the company emailed me back. And then, I was, by the next day, um, just as trading information, I was sold, I went to the website, I saw what they do, and the detail that is involved, and within five, six days, I found myself here. Now, I've uh, been here for about four days. And I find that what they teach here is very detailed. I've learned a lot. I've learned, even, even from being in the fire industry, I've learned stuff that I actually never knew about and, and equipment regarding hood system. I saw it every day, didn't know anything about it. And now I think I can go back to the Bahamas and I can add that as a department of my company now and offer hood cleaning. And not just hood cleaning, we did, um, we could do grease filtration and we could clean appliances as a result of what I did here for the past four days. I would highly recommend this company. I'd recommend Chris and Joe and the crew here at MFS um, to anybody. Hi, I'm uh, Marvin Kwasnitsa. I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, the information that I gathered from this exhaust cleaning uh, training course was invaluable. Um, I especially enjoyed the uh, um, presentation it was very well put together. Uh, we had a lot of help from uh, Chris and Joe, and uh, they made our experience very, very good. I highly recommend this training course. Love you guys. Cozy, I um, own Uri's Cleaning Services in the DMV, and um, we were looking at our added service to our the list of services we provide, so we opted to learn about hood cleaning. And out of the three or four cleaning, uh, hood cleaning companies, uh, hood cleaning schools that came up on Google, Chris's MFS hood cleaning company actually offers um, post uh, course support, if you will. So what drawed me into coming here was the fact that after we're done with classes, after we're done with you know, being certified, we have the opportunity to call him um, if we get to a hood or if we get to a, um, uh, a restaurant where we don't understand what's going on or we need help, he, we have first-hand accessibility to him. So that sold it for me. The past and, four days, um, we have learned, or I can speak for myself, I have learned different avenues to market myself um, with the hood cleaning company, even with my other services. Um, I've learned the classes are not just textbook classes. They're not just what you go on Google and download a book and read through, no. Chris literally sits with you from day one through understanding all NF the uh, NFPA codes and why they're there, what may, you know, the, the, the reason behind the NFPA codes being there, that actually, that helps out a lot. So at the end, like today, the, the we had a, um, we had a uh, role-playing activity and everybody was comfortable pitching ideas. Everybody was comfortable with how they would approach custom, uh, restaurant owners. Everybody was comfortable enough to talk confidently like they've been cleaning hoods for a while and none of us has ever cleaned a hood all, you know, whatever number of class we had. So just to, uh, my feedback is it's, it's a great course. I would recommend it to anybody that, that's looking to learn about hood cleaning, whether you've seen a hood before or someone like me that's never seen a hood. I'm or confident least... to go back home and be able to talk to a customer and actually be able to market and sell my service to a customer like an experienced um, hood cleaner. You know, you feel so, like a part of the school versus just a student that paid whatever number, you know, whatever amount you paid to come to class. And so it's, it's a great course. It's a great four day course. Yeah, my name is Robert Morgan and I am a safety manager with ABM, American Building Maintenance. And we came down here to the commercial hood cleaning class uh, to go ahead from my standpoint to take a look at it from the NFPA 96 and the safety aspect portion of it. Um, however, I did not expect to come down here and be able to learn as much as I did from the operational standpoint uh, for the operations and the incredible amount of detail that is required to perform these, these operations safely, one, and two, to be able to perform these operations effectively. We had two solid days of uh, classroom instruction that was very informative, and then we immediately went out into uh, field operations and, and a very in-depth hands-on training portion. I did learn a lot during this course over the last couple of days, and I do believe it will help our company be very successful in what we're going to do. Hey, my name is Jonathan Gonzalez, with Rullo Steam Wash, desde Houston, Texas. 
eh, vine aquí a aprender la clase de exhaustive cleaning eh, bien bien muy muy buen preparado con el material eh, Chris es definitivamente la persona indicada para enseñar esta, esta clase él tiene la experiencia y la pasión uh, para, para enseñar la clase eh, te enseña desde cómo limpiar el, 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 los extractores hasta cómo agregar más a tu negocio para que puedas hacer más dinero no nada más haciendo una sola cosa te enseña cómo filtrar el aceite de la freidora y eso te abre puertas para entrar a, lo, a los restaurantes aunque no sea nada más a limpiar el, los ventiladores y extractores eh, todo el mundo aquí es bien amigable y te ayuda con lo que tú necesites Chris, Pauline eh, y, y todos los demás aquí de verdad que muy bueno la única razón por la que yo elegí esta escuela en, en, no elegí las otras cinco que estaban en internet fue porque cuando yo eh, los llamé a ellos me atendió directamente Chris y Pauline y ellos me ayudaron muchísimo y eh, por eso decidí venir acá y de verdad que creo que hice una buena inversión สวัสดีครับอ่าผมพี่เอาเอตอนนี้เอ่อมันมันมีงานที่จะทํามากกว่าร้านอาหารที่ทุกคนคนไทยจะคิดถึงแต่ร้านอาหารเวลาที่มา